Lovely to meet you all. My name is Malika and I'm an account partner here at Success at School. Um, so firstly, I would just like to take a moment to thank you all for taking the time out of your day. Um, we really appreciate it. It's such a busy time at school, but hopefully we're here to help you. Um, so today we're joined with Katie and Mariama from Liverpool John Moores University, who will be your revision experts for the day. In this masterclass, you're going to learn not only the most effective revision techniques, but also how to plan out your revision schedule and some mental health tips along the way. Though exams can be daunting, they're simply an opportunity for you to showcase everything you do know. And we're here to support and help you do exactly that. Now, before I pass it over, I would just like to remind you all that this webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel at Successor School so you can rewatch it as many times as you'd like. Please feel free to use the chat to ask any questions that you have as we will also be going through them towards the end of the webinar. Mariam and Katie, over to you guys. Hi everyone, as introduced, my name is Mariama and I work here at Liverpool John Moores University. Thank you all for attending um, this session and we do hope you get the most out of it today. Um, Katie will be presenting, but if you do have any question while she's presenting, um, just please feel free to share any on the chat and I'll make sure to reply to, reply to the um, question as we go. But yeah, I'll hand over to Katie now. Bill, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming along, everyone. I hope that my screen can be seen by everyone. Is that right? My slides are up. Um, I will jump right in then. So yeah, my name is Katie and I'm a, a PhD researcher at um, John Moores University. I'm, I'm studying English and I've studied English at master's level as well as undergraduate level, um, all at John Moores University. Um, and I've taught undergraduate English students as well as um, key stage four students and I'm mentoring some GCSE pupils as well. So I've got a lot of experience in kind of developing study skills and effective strategies for organising your learning that hope um, I'll be able to share some of that with you in this session. Um, so as um, Malika and Mariama said, though, if you've got questions throughout this and you want to put them in the chat then feel free um people will be answering them as i'm talking and then at the end we're going to have a bit more of a chance for for questions as well um i'm just seeing in the chat that a few people can't see the presentation um is that true for everyone and let me see okay some people can see um okay if um there's people um here for tech support as well so if there's anyone with any other um problems maybe they can be guided in the chat there so since it seems that a few of you can see i will just carry on so i'm going to run through an outline of the session today so what we're going to be going through is kind of how to plan your revision how to create a realistic um, revision timetable i'm going to give you some advice on kind of maintaining good mental health um through exam season um, and then we'll give you some um, specific examples of certain memory strategies um, and revision techniques that might work for you, um, as well as some um, suggestions about study skills. And I'll finish by um, going through how kind of learning these kind of revision techniques and study skills now can kind of help your you improve your attainment overall. So they are specifically about kind of exam revision today, but they're skills and, and kind of techniques that can help help you in other areas as well. So to start off, we've got a quick poll. Um, this is just to get a sense of kind of where you're all at at the minute. So I want to kind of um, this poll will come up into the chat. Um, and the poll is to ask you how confident you currently feel about your um, revision techniques. So do you feel extremely confident, somewhat confident, not sure? not very confident or not at all confident. Um, so I'll give you um, about a minute to kind of get your responses into that and then we'll close the poll and see um, how it is. Oh, someone said they've got a, an exam on Monday. Good luck with that. I hope you're feeling all right about that so far.
Um, still a few people responding, so I'll give it a little bit longer. Someone's got A-level exams coming up as well. OK, shall we close that poll then and have a look at how the results are so far? So. Seems like quite a lot of you um, got a response. I'm getting I'm looking through the chat as well to see um, yeah, people are nervous about exams that are coming up very soon. Um, but let's see, we've got only a few people that are extremely confident. Um, a few of you not confident at all, and, and the rest of you seem to be sort of in the middle there as well, from somewhat confident to not very confident and not sure. So hopefully by the end of this session, you'll have picked up some more tips um, that will kind of boost that confidence a bit. And for those of you that are already feeling confident, um, I hope you remain confident as well. Um, so let's go through um, onto the first section of the of the session, which is um, thinking about how to plan your revision. Um, so this is what I'm going to do first is just run through some kind of basic key tips on how to go about planning your research. And then when you um, and then we'll kind of get into the specifics as we go. So, you know, often when you've got a lot to do, it can feel very overwhelming, you know, when you've got these exams looming as well. Um, so these tips are kind of designed to kind of help you to take control of your planning and hopefully um, ease that kind of anxiety. So the first tip is to kind of um, start as early as you can. Um, and obviously, if you've got exams coming up th this week, you're here today. So that's good. That's a, another kind of start. And it's never too late to kind of um, get some new tips and we can take these up and, and plan as we go as well. Um, the sooner you kind of oh, on the wrong side, the sooner that you kind of can start planning, um, the better. But if you're you know, if things are coming up, it's it's not too late to kind of start to take a bit of control over that as well. So don't worry. Um, you know, when we feel overwhelmed, our reaction can be often to kind of put things off rather than to face them. Um, and when you've got a lot of things to do, um, what's the the best way to go about it is to break tasks down into manageable chunks. You know, you want to start to tackle this huge list. Um, when you start to organise that, if you keep your um, tasks kind of small and specific, um, it's going to be easier to tackle that. So rather than saying something like, oh, today I'm going to revise English, give yourself a, a much smaller and much clearer task. You know, something like for the next hour, I'll revise the key themes of Romeo and Juliet, for example. And I'm going to go into a bit more detail in a minute about how you'll get to that stage. Um, the, you know, working efficiently for shorter periods of time rather than trying to cram everything in before um, the day before the exam um, is also a much better way to kind of keep on top of things. Um, the key point that I want to kind of emphasize there is that working little and often is better for your learning and your well-being than it is kind of trying to cram too much at once or to tackle too much at once. Um, and one way that you can go about kind of taking control over this is making a timetable that works for you. Um, so let's get into detail about how you might go about that. So you'll notice that I haven't just called this kind of creating a timetable, but creating a realistic timetable. And what I mean by that is that your timetable should work for you um, and not kind of hold you back. So if you set yourself too many things to do at once, it can quickly feel like you're falling behind. Um, you can cause yourself more stress doing that. So it can take a bit of trial and error to get that kind of timetable that works for you right but I'm going to give you some ideas about where you might start so I'm going to summarize that under two key points which are work out what you need to do and work out how much time you have to do it um, so let's break down 
them a bit into kind of how you'll go about that. So the first step of kind of working out what you need to do is pretty straightforward. Um, make a list of each subject that you're, you've you got exams in. And that um, might seem silly, as I know you're probably very aware of what exams you've got, but having it written down on paper or at post-it notes or in a document on your computer, you know, whatever you prefer, it can really help to kind of see clearly in front of you what needs to be done. And that can take just a little bit of that initial pressure off just having it all kind of going around in your head. The next task then is to break down that list even further. So make a list then of the requirements of each exam paper that you're going to take. So, you know, exam papers in different subjects will have um, different sections in them. There'll be different things and different topics to revise for each of those sections. Um, I'm going to expand on that in a minute as well. Um, if you're unsure of what's going to be on an exam, you can look at past papers or, you know, be talking to your teachers or mentors. Um, make sure that you can be, you know, as clear as you can about what it is that you're actually going to have to revise for. And then when you kind of have that list and you know all the exams, you know, everything, every different topic that you have, you can start to assess where you feel confident and where you don't. Um, and this will help you to prioritise your timetable and prioritise your revision as well. So that'll make a huge difference to how you'll be able to organise that and because you'll be able to see then which topics need more attention than others and kind of help you to kind of tackle that any anxiety or extra stress that you that might just build and build um, if you're putting off things that are more difficult. Um, so I've kind of sketched up an example of what I'm talking about here, um, listing all of my subjects and starting to assess how confident I feel so that I can begin prioritising them. So this is an example of um, GCSEs and these were my GCSEs as well and a reflection of how actually confident I felt in these different subject areas. Um, so uh, this is only a kind of basic start for that just to give you an example. Um, I also used um, BBC Bite Size online which um, you might have used before which gives a really good overview based on different exam boards as well so you can look over if you need a reminder of any of the specific topics um, that your exam board is gonna um, be be kind of um, testing you on so you'll see that what I did here is I wrote my list of topics down one side and then I started to kind of think about how confident I felt in these areas so I kind of see from what I've done, my kind of English subjects and my art, I feel very confident about that. Um, so that doesn't mean I don't need to spend time revising those subjects. It just means they're not my biggest priority at the moment. On Spanish and geography, I'm kind of in the middle. Um, there are some areas of Spanish that I do feel confident in and others not so much. And same with geography, I feel kind of middling about it. So I know I'm going to have to give some attention to those topics. The main areas that I'm struggling with are science, all the sciences and maths is the big one for me and it was and I started then to to make some rough notes around with post-its and on some individual topics in each of, each of these areas that I needed help with. So for maths for me that was everything I needed help with every bit of math um, and then I've gone here and I've gone oh especially you know fractions, especially algebra um, and I've done the same for physics, chemistry and biology kind of listing out for myself like which are the topics that I actually think I need to give most attention to because I don't feel confident that I can be examined on them at all. So what I do next then is I kind of reorganise that list again. I know the subjects that need the most attention, I know the kind of topics that I think I need I most the most help with and I know what I feel most confident in. Um, so this is only a kind of small selection and the kind of more detailed you can be at this early stage of planning, the better it'll be for you. So it might seem like just a lot of lists and a lot of writing things out over and over again. But I think it, I definitely find it very helpful to have all of that in front of me. And then you start to like hone it down and um, revise it and revise it until you've got a very specific idea of what it is you need to do. Um, so that's what I've done here. I've, I've divided it into three sections with the kind of maths and the topics that I need the most help with um, down to the ones that I feel confident in but I still know that I need to do some work on them as well. So just to reiterate the kind of first stage of planning um, you want to figure out what you need to do 
by being as specific as you can about what's coming up and um, prioritise them in terms of how confident you feel and how much work you think it's going to take you to address each individual subject. Once you've figured out that, the next thing to do is to think about um, how much time you have to do it. So I know some of you in the chat have already said you've got exams coming up next week and in the next few weeks. So when you're creating a timetable, you want to have a calendar ahead of you with all of your exam dates in them and you want to work backwards from there. Um, you want to make sure also you're factoring in things like when you're already in school, if you've got work or other commitments, when you're going to take free time and when you're going to take breaks. And I know when you've got exams looming, it feels like, well, there's no time to take time off. There's no time to take breaks. But I'm going to keep repeating that point a few times throughout this, that it is important to make sure you do factor in time to rest. Um, I'm going to come back to that as well. So when you kind of have your list, you know which topics um, need the most attention, you know when your exams are, you can start to then really plan back from there um, what needs to be dealt with first. And then when you come to like creating a revision timetable for yourself, there's kind of um, lots of different ways that you can do this. The important thing is to think about um, what you're actually going to find most useful and what you think you'll actually use. So you could spend hours and hours making a beautiful handcrafted calendar that you hang on your wall. Um, it can be colour coded. It can have all these wonderful things on it. Um, or you could just use something that is online, a template that you find, or you could just do it on a piece of paper um, or you could have it maybe on your phone or the family calendar in the kitchen. Um, make sure that it is something that you're actually going to look at and that's actually going to help you to keep organised. So think about what kind of timetable will work for you and be realistic about that. You know, not every kind of, of organisational tool is, is good for everyone. And again, as I said, start with the things that you already know. Um, plot out when it is you've got plans, plot out when it is you're going to be in school or in work. Um, and then the next thing to think about is when you have time to revise and when you're actually going to work best. So you know yourself kind of when you're most able to be productive. So if you know that when you come in from school, that is when you are you have the most energy, then maybe you could set aside some time then and have a re revision slot then. But if you know you really tired after you finish school, you're going to need some downtime, then factor that in as well. Give yourself a break before you have a revision session. Um, it's really important to kind of work with yourself on those things. I'm going to talk a little bit more in a minute about why that's so important to plan from the start for, for the breaks and free time from the beginning of this planning. Um, so just in this um, example here, you'll see um, this is from a student who's just done this on a piece of paper, a weekly timetable. They're just done a very simple thing, colour coded um, different subjects and you'll see the brown here is free time. So they're giving themselves an entire Sunday off and there's lots of free time scattered throughout as well. Um, so you know when is going to be best for you um, in terms of what you kind of already have plans, what, com what commitments you have and when you work best. So always make sure that you kind of prioritise your needs and what you know about yourself in the organisation process. Um, here's a very quick example, just what, have I, what I put together. Um, I decided I'd do a quick kind of digital um, table just in Word. Um, and I decided that, you know, if I'm revising now, I know that when I come back from school, I don't have the brain power to do it. So I've scheduled in a break and a snack for an hour every day when I get back from school. Um, I've plotted out when I have um, different activities going on. Um, and then I have started to think about when I'm going to do the um, tackle the topics that I'm struggling most with. And for me, I know that as the day goes on or as the evening goes on, that's when my energy starts to drain. So I'm putting the more difficult topics earlier in my revision slots because um, I know if I leave them to the end, I'm going to be too tired and I'm not going to want to do them. So I put the topics that I feel more confident in at the end of my revision session so that I can end the kind of the day on a positive note, I know that for me, that's going to make a huge difference to how motivated I feel to pick up my revision the next day as well. So, but this is just an example, of course, and it's all about thinking about um, what it is that you think is going to work best for you. So to review the kind of um, 
top tips for how to create a realistic revision timetable. Um, break down your tasks into small manageable goals. So maybe think about weekly goals and then look at individual days, even break it down to like an hour, half a day, half an hour, um, as specific as you can be um, so that you can keep it manageable. Always go with what works best for you. So think carefully about what actually is going to work. And that's in terms of the kind of timetable you're choosing, as well as the um, the time throughout the week that you're actually going to spend revising, you know, what time of evening you're going to do at what time of day. Um, and just be really realistic about that. So do you know for sure that you're too tired when you get in from school to actually do anything? Don't try and make yourself do anything then. Give yourself the time to rest, refresh yourself and then get to it. Um, you know, are you going to realistically ever look at a, a colour coded sheet that you spend five hours making on your wall? If you are, then that's great. But if you actually think, actually, I'm going to use to use my phone calendar, that's what I'm going to look at every day. That's what's going to actually help me be organised, then then go with that as well. You know, think realistically about how much you can actually get done in a day, half a day, an hour, half an hour um, and be flexible. You know, life happens. Things get sidetracked. Some days you're better able to focus than others. You might get a cold or anything can kind of happen that can slightly throw off your schedule. And that's OK. You know, it's it's important, you know, that your free time and your breaks are kind of factored into your schedule because things do come up. And if you sit down one day, you've had a hard day, you're looking at your revision, you just can't do it. It's kind of better to shift things around than to try and force something that isn't actually going into your brain anyway. And this is why kind of a digital timetable or just something that you mock up, you know, quickly on a scrap piece of paper might be better than something really um, time consuming and beautiful that you hang on your wall because it's going to be much easier if it's in a phone calendar or if it's just on a piece of paper to to make alterations as you might need to. Um, it's not the end of the world if you need to make changes as you go. Um, it's better to adapt when you realise something isn't working than kind of force something that isn't useful for you. And the most important thing I think overall is to look after yourself and that is what we're going to just spend a little time thinking about now. Um, so I've got another poll um, just to see um, how this is for you. So I'm asking you how many times a week you do a kind of self-care activity and by self-care I mean taking some specific action to look after or improve your health, well-being or happiness. So what kind of time do you allocate um, to looking after yourself and it could mean a lot of different things to you it could be making sure you stop working for lunch break every day it could be setting time aside each week to catch up with friends it could be very simple things like um, getting enough sleep or watching your favorite tv show you know anything that you know helps you maintain your well-being especially during very stressful periods so just in general how many times a week do you specifically allocate to something to look after your own self-care Give you just a minute to start answering that question. Just having a look through the chat as well. Nice to see you all sharing your ideas of the different things that you use. Yeah. That kind of overwhelming feeling already. That's very normal. I know that um, many of you will probably be feeling that right now. Um, and this kind of idea of taking self care um, can really help with that. You know, if you feel like you're really overwhelmed, you're really swamped, um, you're not able in that state of mind to actually take in any information. So, like taking a step back um, to rest is is a really good way to kind of start addressing that. I know it, it doesn't feel like a great thing to do when you've got so much on your plate but it really is important um let's have a look at the poll i think we can close the poll now and i'll see how it's looking with um responses so we've got about 34 percent of you doing something daily um some people in between every other day a few times a week weekly um but still you know 22 percent 23% rarely kind of taking specific time to look after your self-care. Okay. 
Um, I'll just. Yeah, I can see it as some in the chat as well. Um, exercising most evenings, Kate, Caitlin says, but it does take up time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Amanda saying that she's doing yoga and meditation. Yeah, loads of different things work for other people. Um, so I'll give you some other tips and, and just want to go through as well why um, I want to prioritize this as part of like a, a skill or something that you should be working on as, as part of um, revising for exams. So um, it's obviously really important to to look after your well-being at all times um, but during revision and exam periods it can get kind of even more difficult to do that with the stress and anxiety of trying to keep on top of all your work and manage those kind of exam nerves which are completely normal um, and this is why kind of planning your timetable I during that I've kind of emphasized so much how important it is to take breaks um, and to, to kind of schedule that in as well because finding that balance between work and downtime can make a huge difference overall um, not only just to your mental well-being, but actually to your ability to to do the work that you need to do and to remember what you're trying to learn. Um, so there's a few different things that you can do um, in order to kind of get that balance better. So keeping up with kind of friends, family and your hobbies and downtime during these um, really stressful periods is so important. Um, and as well as kind of staying organized so the benefit of having a timetable um, and kind of making all those lists to kind of really plot out for yourself what it is that you have to do is that it kind of takes that information out of your brain and puts it clearly in front of you it can kind of help that kind of um, build up of like really overwhelming feelings um, and when you're kind of really struggling I'd say that like working for short bursts I think even if you're not struggling working for short bursts and taking regular breaks is really the most effective way to kind of get through a lot of different things. So um, I don't know if you, any of you have ever used the Pomodoro technique before, but it's a very simple um, technique in which you work in timed 25 minute bursts, followed by a break of about five minutes or 10 minutes occasionally as well. Um, and what you do is the key is to be very strict. So you set yourself a very specific task, say I'm going to you know read my chemistry notes and I'm going to start like you know building you know writing down um, the key points that I need to memorize for this topic right um, you put a timer on for 25 minutes you sit there you do the task that you've set yourself to do when the timer goes off whatever you're up to you stop you walk away you set another timer for 10 or five minutes you totally leave the space you're at you go and you know sit outside for a minute or you get a drink or you do a stretch or you do some breathing and then you go back and you set yourself another timer for 25 minutes you do another task um and if you're really struggling you know sometimes 25 minutes feels like too long as well to even imagine sitting still and doing some work so if you're in a rut like that keep it even shorter than that say for five minutes i'm going to read this for 10 minutes i'm going to write these notes out you know and and then stick to that time it kind of rather than telling yourself I need to sit for five hours and do this revision um, which is too broad and very overwhelming you're just saying to yourself I'm going to sit here for 25 minutes and then I'm going to take a five minute break and I mean I do this all the time when I'm kind of struggling to get on top of my workload I think there's so much to do I don't know where to start I just go don't even think about it 25 minutes is all I'm going to do and once you've done 25 minutes you've taken a quick break it just Time goes by so much faster and it's so much more um, efficient as well. So doing some other very simple things too, like getting a change of scene, um, changing where you work and changing where you rest, um, go to the library or go to a coffee shop or go to a friend's house and work in groups, you know, mix things up and think about how it is that you work best. So do you like total silence when you work? Do you like um, a little bit of background noise, a little bit of background music? Um, and just kind of keeping on top of all the very simple things too, like making sure you get sleep, making sure you eat, um, making sure you take breaks, making sure you drink water. You know, they they sound like things that we're just going to do every day anyway. But I think most of us know when we're stressed, when we're overwhelmed, these kind of daily things quite quickly go out the window, but they make a huge difference. So this is why it's important, I think, to schedule stuff like that in when you've got a lot going on and when you've got a lot to do. Um, you say to yourself right it is 12 o'clock now it's lunchtime I walk away from my desk I'm going to get my lunch um, and be strict with yourself about 
about your self-care as well as you are about your revision. That balance is really important, I think. Um, and obviously, if you're um, feeling totally overwhelmed and totally stressed and, and nothing seems to be working for you, then um, do seek help um, from someone else. There's a lot of good advice from places like Young Vines, um, the Mind Organisation and the NHS about um, you know things that you can do if you're experiencing kind of overwhelming um exam stress um and if and they've they've all got kind of tips on places you can seek extra help if you do need it so if you are really struggling then don't kind of feel like you're alone and doing that and do reach out for help so the kind of key tips to reiterate about kind of maintaining good mental health um while you're going about exam periods in particular um do one task at a time, right? Just don't um, don't get so overwhelmed with all of the things you need to do. Um, it's very easy to fall into that and it's very hard to get out of. So when you start to feel that looming, just think, what's the one small thing that I can do right now? And just take it one small thing at a time. Um, know your limits. Um, if you feel tired or frustrated with your revision, it's much better to step away and have a rest and refresh yourself than it is to kind of push through um, and cram and burn yourself out. Sometimes when there's so much to do, it feels kind of counterproductive to step away, but it's actually much more productive to work when you're well rested. Um, have a change of scene when you can, even if it's just to go and eat your lunch somewhere different than you're working or to just go and sit outside for five minutes on your break um, or switching up and working in different places throughout the week if you can do that um, just giving your brain something else to look at somewhere else to be um, for a few minutes or a few hours anything you can do um, and keep checked in with your support network whoever that might be for you it could be friends or family it could be people at school or mentors anyone um, don't isolate yourself because everyone as much as you're kind of all having to do your own work at the at the minute like no one is kind of in this alone as much as it might feel like it sometimes so um it really is important to take breaks that is if there's one thing that i'd like you to kind of take away from this today it's that it's that you must schedule time off you must schedule breaks um no matter how much work you've got going on um and that break can kind of look a lot of different ways to a lot of people but I hope that you find the kind of the thing or the series of things that are good for you and make sure they're a part of your kind of um, revision and exam period schedule as well as um, other times as well. Um, so what we're going to do then just for the rest of the session is I'm just going to give you a few specific tips about um, different memory strategies, different revision techniques. So some of the more specific things that you could use um, when you're kind of tackling different topics. So obviously when you've got a lot of information that you need to retain and you need to kind of get it in there um, in, a, in a relatively short amount of time, um, it's useful to try out different techniques um, in order to kind of more effectively retain the information that you need. So I've included some links here um, and I think you'll be able, you'll have access to these slides. Um, after the session. So um, I've included some links to a few good resources here um, that give loads of different um, memory strategies and revision techniques. Um, so you can kind of have a look through them and choose which things are best for you. You know, not everything is going to work for every topic and not everything is going to work for everyone, but it's good to kind of pick and choose what you think um, is going to be best for you. So all of the advice kind of reiterates a few key points, though, and that is working little and often so you don't tire out your brain. So this is not just something that is going to help you maintain good mental health. It's something that actually your brain needs to be able to rem remember things. It needs to be rested. It needs breaks. Um, engage with the information that you're reading actively. Um, and we're going to go into more detail about what it means to kind of engage and be active in your learning in just a minute. Um, give your brain some variety. So use not just the same technique, um, use a variety of techniques and switching things up. So if you're using one technique for science and another technique for English and another technique for maths, you know, switching it up and giving your brain different things to focus on um, can help you kind of getting worn out, repeating the same thing. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a minute as well. Um, take breaks. This is the the um, advice on um, having good memory also emphasizes this. So like I said, with working and often taking breaks is not just 
for your kind of sense of well-being it is literally your brain needs it so it has a chance to absorb the information you're putting in there and review what you've learned so don't just kind of read something once and expect it to stay in there you need to kind of be going back over the work and um and revising and and reviewing what you've already done so I'm going to give you a couple of examples of memory strategies now, and these might be things that you've used before. Um, and if you have any other ideas, feel free to put them in, in the chat as well. Um, so mnemonics are a kind of tool that you can create yourself. So what it basically means is that you give yourself a way to form associations between with information that you're finding difficult to recall. So you could do this using kind of vivid memory strategies. You could kind of make up stories to remember a sequence of information, or you could start to kind of picture facts as locations on a map, for example. So here's a very simple mnemonic um, to give you an example. So this is I want to memorize something from GCSE chemistry. I want to be able to memorize what oxidation and reduction is. So I come up with this mnemonic. Um, and it's the words oil rig. Um, and this is how I've done it. So oil rig um, is applied to each one. So for O, oxidation, I is L, loss of electrons. So I know oil equals oxidation is loss of electrons. And then rig, R is reduction, I is G, gain of electrons. So rig is reduction is gain of electrons. So in order to help myself remember this, I have I repeat to myself, oil rig. Oil oxidation is loss of electrons, rig reduction is gain of electrons. That's a very simple example of a mnemonic um, for information like that that is just, I personally find things like that very difficult to retain. So a mnemonic kind of helps me to, to really um, keep that information in my mind. Another memory strategy, and I was obsessed with this when I was doing my GCSEs and A-levels, this I found really useful, um, was memory places, or sometimes they're called memory palaces. So this kind of uses your spatial memory to help you learn sequences of information. So you turn kind of chunks of information, um, information into vivid mental pictures, and you kind of connect them to um, a location that you know well. Um, so to give you an example for this, I've thought about um, topic I wanted to revise in geography. So there are four key points about how urban areas can become more sustainable. And what I do is I assign those four key points to four places in the room that I'm in. Um, so I choose, my, I enable the door, point number one, my desk number two, my window number three, and my shelf number four. Um, and so what I do is I put the information um, on a post-it note in those places and I walk around and I literally read um, that and I repeat these things out to myself as I'm learning them. So I go, number one, that's the door. Um, I stand at the door and I read about water conservation. I know the key things um, about how to conserve water that I need to remember are you install dual flush toilets in businesses and homes and you collect rainwater for gardens and you install water meters in properties. And I repeat that out loud to myself and then I move to number two, my desk. I read the key points about energy conversation. I move to the window, that's number three, waste recycling. I read the key points about waste recycling. I go to number four, which is about creating green spaces and I read the key points for that. And I repeat that a couple of times, taking the time that I need to read through that information to, be, to begin associating the information with the particular point in my room that I've assigned it to. So I might repeat that a few times then I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to return to it right I'm going to review what I've learned so I'm going to remove the post-its and I'm going to see what it is that I've retained I'm going to say right I'm standing at the door that's water con conservation what do I remember I repeat that for all of them and then I look at my notes again and I see if I'm right if there's any um, information that I missed or got wrong I'm going to repeat the activity again um, and again take a rest review it and then I'm going to figure out if that is kind of helping me to remember that or maybe for this information if it's not working I'm going to need to use a different technique um, but I found that uh, um, memory places and kind of doing that kind of very physical activity um, really useful for information that I um, that I had to try and remember for my exams um, so I'm going to give you a quick test to see if 
our first mnemonic worked for any of you. So if you can remember what oil rig stands for, then type it into the chat. So that was oil rig, what, what are oxidation and reduction? We've got a few guesses. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Reduction is gain, loss, gain, loss, gain, yeah. A few are getting that, so that might be from memory or it might be from um, something you already know, but yeah, that is a very simple thing. So yeah, well done if you remembered that. Um, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, I think, from what I can see, um, most people got that right. Great. Um, so. Like I said, there is links on one of the previous slides and there are loads of different kinds of um, memory strategies that might work for you. Um, the key is to kind of try different things out um, apply different techniques to different topics um, and kind of see what works for you. So mnemonics and memory places are just two examples of a, a memory technique. You can also do mind maps, note cards. You can teach information to someone else um, and look at past papers as well to kind of test your ability to recall information. The important thing is that you try different things um, and you review what you're learning as you go. You know, take breaks, go back to it, see if these are working for you or if they're not. Um, remember to kind of think about what works for you best. Um, and what works best for you will depend on your kind of preferences and how you think you learn best as well. So this can vary from person to person you, and it can change depending on the kind of information you want to be taking in. So if you prefer visual techniques, you might like things like posters and colourful charts and mind maps and colour coded note ca cards. If you're a kinesthetic learner, then that's about movement and moving around, then um, memory places might work well for you as well as kind of listening to recorded notes while you're on a walk or on a run or just moving around the house. If you're an auditory learner, then you might want to listen to recordings. You might want to ask someone to repeat information back to you. So you take it in easier. You can use um, text to speech functions on the computer. So rather than trying to read lots of information on the screen, get it the computer to read it to you instead. Um, and if you're kind of an auditory learner, then kind of having music on um, in the background um, while you work might be better for you too. So you might use different songs in the background for different topics. You know, that might help you to associate um, information as well. So you can kind of use any combination of these kinds of techniques as well. Multi, multi sensory learning tends to be most affected for most people, so not just using one kind of technique or one kind of style, but kind of using different combinations of that can often be the more effective way for most of us to kind of retain information. Um, and whatever kind of techniques or styles you use, though, it's important that you use things that are allow you to actively learn. So active learning is um, this is what I was talking about before with making sure you engage with your information. So Active learning is um, more effective because passive learning makes it less likely that you're going to remember the information. So um, passive learning, for example, might just be simply reading a worksheet without having any clear goal of what you need to learn from it. Um, so here's a, a quick task for you to um, do in the chat as well. So I'm going to read you a list of um, kind of learning techniques and I want you to put an A or a P um, next to them in the chat. Um, if you think they're active or passive. Um, so I'm just going to put all four examples there. So they are highlighting phrases and words in text. So that is reading through information and highlighting it as you go. Um, making mind maps, you know, writing things out on a piece of paper, um, doing past papers, um, so practice exams, or and copying, putting notes on your computer. So just copying and pasting things. Um, so I'll just give you a minute to maybe you can choose um, one of them if you have any clear idea if you think any in particular are active or passive techniques you're all very clever you're putting in um uh so we've got some people who think the first and the last are passive and the two in the middle are active we've got some people who think they're all active and yeah good range people mixing it up Active and passive, active and passive. Yeah, thanks. So let's have a a look then. 
at what they are. So highlighting phrases and words in a text is actually considered a passive technique. Um, and that's because whilst you are recognising that there's important information in there when you highlight it, um, you're not actually thinking yourself about what, why it's important. And I'm going to give you another example of something that is um, more effective in just a second. Um, mind mapping is an active technique. You know, it, it is you making connections between the information. Um, it's giving you a way to structure your learning and it's giving your memory a kind of route to retrieve that information later. Um, doing past papers is also an active technique because it helps you to reshape the material learning to fit the blueprint of an exam answer. So if you do a past paper um, under exam conditions for yourself um, at home and then you look back on that, um, you know, seeing how you've done in those conditions can kind of actually help you adjust how it is and what it is that you're learning as well. Um, and putting notes on your computer is um, a passive technique. So copying things across takes up time. It, you're not really engaging with the information when you do that. It can just end up being a big waste of your time. So here are some um, more active techniques um, that you can use, things that will actually save you time and improve the, the way that you retain the information. So rather than highlighting text, annotating them is a very good active technique. So when you make notes of your own ideas, as you read, you're actively engaging with the text. Then you bring your own experience to your interpretation of what's been written, not just recognising that what's important in the text. Um, summarising information on index cards or note cards, you know, if you can get a topic down to its few key points, that can really force you to um, remember and identify those key points. And repeating things out loud um, to yourself, um, that works where just by like copying it down by hand or copying on a computer works. So saying something out loud or having someone say it to you can often be um, a really effective way of, of proofreading your information. Um, so just to finish up before we go on to some more questions, I want to just to end by letting you know that these revision techniques, while they're applicable to exams that you might be doing now or in the next few years, um, learning kind of revision techniques and study skills now can help you to um, raise your attainment overall. So what we mean by attainment is um, a couple of things. So it both means literally just the, the grades that you receive, you know, the academic standards you achieve. So these could be A-levels or, or GCSE grades. But attainment is also about how you can continue to de demonstrate your skills and knowledge in a more general way. Um, so these are things that, that you know, you use throughout your um, study life and throughout your working life, throughout your life in general as well. So um, a lot of research, and there are kind of links to this on the, on the page here, have shown that School students don't often make use of effective study skills in their independent study. So these are the kinds of techniques and ideas that I have gone over with you today. Um, and these are things that you might your teachers might use with you in class as well. Um, but, you know, revising for exams is a self driven activity and it can be more difficult to kind of navigate doing that um, when you haven't done it before, and especially when you've got loads of different subjects to do. Um, but research has also shown that um, there is a really strong link between using different study skills and techniques and the level of the attainment that you can achieve. So there's a direct link between using a range of, you know, specific and active techniques and how well you can do, um, not just in exams, but how well, how good you are in, in, in general at kind of maintaining good skills and knowledge. Um, and there are lots of different ways that you can do that you know some of the things we've gone over today and there are more examples in the links that I've given you but um there are three kind of key principles to follow um that the the techniques I've given you today have been based on as well so the first is planning so setting yourself clear goals identifying what knowledge you already have and selecting the right study techniques um and allocating the resources that are best for you so that is thinking about what time you have um, what materials you have, um, as well as what you need to do as a priority. Um, monitoring, so that's using self-testing to monitor your learning, so giving yourself that time to review what you've done, um, maybe do past papers, it might just be kind of giving yourself mini tests on the things you've just learnt. And then evaluation, so that is appraising the outcomes and processes of your learning, and that can be um, part of your review 
process or it can just be as well making sure you um, take time to take stock of what you've done and celebrate the the, net, the wins that you have as well. Um, so in summary then the key points and the key things that I would like you to take away from this today are the um, kind of getting a, taking grasp of your kind of revision timetable you know can help you to really take control and organize your learning um, that can be empowering for yourself you know um, it's really important to be realistic and flexible um, it's very very important as I said the most important thing I think is to make sure that you rest that you take care of yourself through all of this um, and that as you go you review and you adapt you make sure you know what your plan is and what's working for you and what isn't um, so I hope you've found something in there that was useful um, for you today and that is the end of my talk and we will kind of go to answering any questions. Yes, thank you, Katie. I think we can all agree that was really, really useful. And thank you to everyone who's popped so many questions in the chat and engaged with all the polls as well. Um, since we're, we've got about five or so minutes left, um, one of the biggest questions that we've got is students have got exams coming up in the next week or so. Um, do you have any sort of quick tips on how they can revise in such a short amount of time? I know quite a few people sort of talked about the Pomodoro technique and cramming in that 25 minutes of really focused revision. And there's another app called Forest, which I used when I was in school whereby it locks your phone and then you can actually grow a tree um, if you don't answer any messages for the set amount of time that you lock your phone. So there's little apps like that as well. Um, but Katie, if you've got any little quick fire tips for students who've not got a lot of time to, to cram. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I think there's the same tips apply really. It's just um, getting it on a short time period. So if you've got exams next week, I would um, make sure you know um, you know, at first when all those exams are and what is on them. So do that, you know, do that list for yourself. Make sure you know exactly what's what's coming up and, and what it is you're kind of feeling most nervous about and then prioritise it in that way. So um, think about the things that you that you really feel you need a refresher on or that you don't have as much confidence in and prioritise a bit of time to them um, so that if you can do them kind of you know this evening or tomorrow rather than um last thing before the exam and before the exam you're just giving yourself self time to breathe and just maybe review very quickly the things you feel all right about um i think that's the best way to go about it so it is about prioritizing um not letting yourself get overwhelmed give yourself a few clear things that you that are going to be achievable and focus on them um just gonna yeah. add to that quickly and I think I've literally I just Katie probably know I just finished my exam last week and I'm doing I'm a master's student mm -hmm. it is overwhelming when you have it all in your head and I am the type that tends to also leave it last minute so I can completely relate to all of you so try maybe some people that said oh they don't have time to do the timetable but trust me like try a to-do list get it out of your head and write it down make it colorful so that it's easy for you to read and appealing and try to make sure it's it's on paper if it's on your head it'll be too much and definitely you might think because you have a short period of time or you have to sit for hours and revise not necessarily definitely take those breaks I was the same but I remember when I took like literally 10 minutes to just like do a yoga all like I literally started coming up with such a great ideas and everything and I was like oh that was just a 10 minute break but it really does refresh your mind and that during that break time it it literally helps your mind think properly and come up with a great um great ideas and solutions even how to organize yourself so do take the breaks very seriously and I think I use also I don't know if anyone knows about Quizlet so if you're trying to like memorize stuff definitely use Quizlet you'll find it for those who does not have time you can find some like already made cue cards from like a specific topic so you can use that you don't have to start from scratch so if you don't have much time Quizlet is literally perfect as well yeah 
Yeah, no, that's great. And I would just want to stress that it's definitely not sort of the amount of time that you have to revise. It's more so how you're revising and making sure that it is those sort of past uh, those active techniques that we were talking about earlier. Um, you sort of mentioned and I think quite a few people have said that they're quite nervous about exams coming up and just in the in the lead up, the couple of hours before their exams, those nerves start compounding in and they want to sort of read the textbook a million times. How would you suggest sort of coping with those pre-exam nerves, whether that just be sort of mindfulness or any breathing techniques? Do you have any pre pre jitters, pre-exam jitter techniques to help? Yeah, definitely. I think it can be very tempting to um, kind of go over and over and over the notes um, when you feel nervous like that in those kind of few hours um, in the build up. But I think often um, when you're feeling that nervous and stressed, you're not actually taking in anything new at that point. You can just be getting yourself a bit more worked up. So I would um, one thing someone taught me to do once and it was just it's whenever I feel nervous if I have an interview or before an exam or before anything what um, a very simple like um, technique um, it, it's, is to sit it's just to sit down somewhere and to look at a point ahead of you you just choose a point on the wall you look at it and then you just kind of try and slow your breathing as you're looking at it you don't need to stare not intense just look at it um, and you kind of slow your breathing a bit and then you just think right what can I see um out of my right eye what can I see out of my left eye what can I see if I try and you know look in my peripheral vision and you're just kind of taking in very slowly um the just what's in front of you and trying to breathe slowly as well so if you're really kind of getting het up that's one little thing that I would do um literally the moment before I'm going into an exam or I'm going into something that I'm nervous about doing just to really like ground yourself in that way um, and then I think just generally in the few hours before or the night before, um, different things work for different people, of course, like you might want to look over your notes the night before an exam again, but I wouldn't be trying to cram too much or learn anything new in that time. I would maybe just give yourself a little time to just go, right, OK, I know these things, I've got this. And if you can try and do something to take your mind off it, um, whether that's a nice meal or a bit of a walk or spending time with you know people that you like hang around with um um hanging out with pets um that kind of anything you can do to relax i think um even though it's really hard to um yeah that's what i would suggest i think yeah no that's great mariam if you've got any sort of ways that you deal with your nerves i know you mentioned yoga earlier <laughs> yeah i i do i do love a yoga so yoga it really does help but i i tend to actually listen to music which it literally just clears my mind completely and um, from the whole revisions like i i have a playlist that i know i even put on some throwback songs it kind of takes me back to like times that i was so happy so that's a great obviously for those who love music so yeah music is even sometimes you see me with my headphones i don't try to talk to anyone especially those who are doing the exams as well because i feel like your panic might just make me panic so i try to not talk to people i'll just put my headphones until like maybe 10 minutes before the exam and then i'll go with a calm head and just yeah relax but do get sleep please do not think oh my god i'm gonna revise all night it's not gonna help you have a fresh mind when you're in the exam you want to make sure that you're going to remember what you studied and if you not if you're tired you're most likely not going to remember and your brain is just going to be just over it so try to get some sleep and just do something you love especially katie said as well like spending time with your pets or even like whatever works for you whatever brings you peace and like be happy go do that Oh, thank you guys. That's really appreciated. I think on behalf of all of us, we just want to say a massive good luck to all of you who've got your exams coming up. Just remember, it's a moment for you to showcase everything that you do know. Um, and hopefully you guys have taken away a couple of tips from from Katie today about how you can sort of plan and structure your revision. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming today. As a reminder, this will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow. Um, so you will have access to that to rewatch it as many times as you like. Um, but thank you all and we hope you have a lovely evening.
Yeah, can I just add just last yeah. point? Um, I think I saw in the chat a lot of people asking like, oh, they don't know what they're panicking. They don't know what course to choose at university or air levels or GCSE. Honestly, I think I put it in the chat. Do not panic. It's completely normal. And um, what I would recommend as, as I said, do your research. A lot of universities are currently providing like free summer school program on different subjects. So do your research and apply for these things. And also like universities have open days. They have like a subject specific taster days. So you can go in and get a feel what it's like to study these subjects. It's good. Try different ones that can help you narrow down like your options or just pick. Look at what you want to do in the future and then kind of that. For example, if you know you want I don't know, want to be in a healthcare field, then you know to choose nursing or healthcare practice, etc. So basically do not panic. And you can always contact the universities, ask to speak to academics or specific students. They're all very nice people, as like literally never be think that, oh, they're too to like professional I can't speak to them no literally just email them or even it's quick give them a quick phone call they can always help and support you but definitely take advantage of all the free things that the universities are offering so check their website any events they're offering do attend it will really help you choose um your courses yeah but thank you very much all for attending and we do hope uh, we do obviously say best of luck for all of you on your exams and we do hope you did you do well yeah good luck everyone